I don't know, maybe... So, there is one guy who doesn't speak Japanese. When he's here, I would like to do this in Japanese, in English. And I think most of you are fine with this, okay? As far as I understood from your resumes, you guys are okay with this, right? Okay? I see some surprised faces, but you should be expecting this. So, um, this is going to be short but quite fun, intensive course for three days. And um, hopefully you enjoy this. And then, um, so first thing first, we're gonna cut down this number into half after a three day course, because uh, we cannot handle um, so too many people like this uh, to start our first, very first uh, batch of our KO Edge program. And I will talk about what KO Edge program is and then what we're aiming uh, when we get more people in. So. Before we start, how many people saw all the videos I sent you? Good. Any comments? Okay. Which one was? Well, one I like the most is the David Kelly's how to about the creative confidence. Creative confidence, yes, yes. It was about a 12 minute uh, presentation, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's one of my best too. Um, Non-SDM people, okay, we have um, so many SDM people as a spies in the, in the tables. <laughs> so, who are SDM people? Raise your hand. Okay, these are your spies. <laughs> They're my spies, spying on you, if, if you understood the material and if you're not talking um, something else. Um, that's, that's not true, they're, they're just um, here to, to be a global entrepreneur as well as you guys. So um, non-SDM people, who saw a video and what, any comment on that? Yeah? Is that is all? What's that? Is that no, you don't have to be looking at all the videos. Uh, well, I, I really like Gentry. Yeah? Like her. Yeah? Because the system engineer is something that's pretty far from my background. Right. Good. And that right, and he's a really funny guy, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yes. Can you believe he's like the one of the top engineers in NASA? Well, well he's like out of my imagination. Maybe. Right. Because I thought that people from NASA must be really, really square headed and really, really smart, intelligent people. Right. But well, you're right about the later half. You're, you're, they're smart and intelligent, but not uh, like a um, smart ass, but he's a. <laughs> Quite a funny guy. Yeah. That's true. I really okay. like the fact that he said that when you are trying to work at the front end, when you're trying to make something new, and you have to be have to have to be prepared for two things. Mm -hmm. what do you do? To risk. Yeah. And the first one is like, is the fact that the project might not even happen. Right. <laughs> And the second one that you might not be able to finish it in time. Cool, yes. And it's something that I really, really agree with. Right, we all share that, yeah. that feeling, yes, true. Who else watched that NASA guy video? 45 minutes. Crazy long. But <laughs> you better, it's, it's really fun. It's, it's, okay, please, you need to skip the first five minutes. Because there will be an Indian guy talking about stuff, right? Yeah, you understand what I'm saying, yes. So just skip that part and get to the to the, the meat. Yes. Okay. So um, I hope you saw all the short videos and did you integrate that in your head? I mean, you know, there were three types of videos, right? So one was uh, talking about system engineering, one was talking about more about design, and one talking about on a, more on the business side. So basically, these three aspects are what we're doing here in KO Edge. So you're gonna cover those aspects in three days. Today, we're mainly focusing on the design approach, which is um, design thinking will be, we will be talking about a lot about design thinking, but not about um, doing stuff with um, clay doughs and um, crayons, but we will talk about the philosophy and mindset about this. And then we're gonna do a little bit of uh, exercise on their techniques and tools. And then the next day, the second day will be a 29th, will be on uh, next Saturday. It's gonna be, we're gonna be covering the system approach, which is my expertise. I'm a system engineer. I will talk about myself a little bit, but um, that's my expertise. And uh, um, you can think as system, 
and you can approach your um, target or um, system of interest as a system. So we're going to talk about that and we're going to do some exercise on that too. And on the third day, we're going to talk about business synthesis. So this is the term we coined uh, for this um, KO Edge because you usually call it business analysis or financial analysis, but instead we would like to call it business synthesis. So analysis and synthesis comes in pair, right? And then we think it, it's always a synthesis that happens first, and then you analyze it to make sure your synthesis is correct, or you make an iteration out of this two aspects. So that's the whole concept of the business synthesis, and we're gonna do that in third day. So that's gonna be a lot in three days, and um, I hope you enjoy it. And um, it's going to be in this room. Yeah, all three days going to be in this room. OK. How many people do we have right now? How many missing? Like four more? OK, five more coming. All right. I'm going to start anyways. So um, oh, again, welcome. So you are here for um, KO Edge program. And then um, here's a little explanation on the edge. So I have um, handed out the, the packet that I'm showing right now. This is the packet. Um, it says uh, introduction. So you can take a look at that. Or it's, it's exactly the same. So um, if, you want to, if you want to look up here, that's fine. Um, so this program is funded by MEX, Ministry of Education, um, Technology, Blah, 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 Sports, Science, and whatsoever. That's all included in this X. So that's kind of funny. But so this is funded by Max, and then it's going to run for three years. And then this is what they're claiming. So, Nihon ni okere innovation sourcing no kasseka no tame, daigaku no kenkyu, kai hatseka, motorista venture no sogyo ya, kizon kigyo ni yoru shin jigyo no sourcing so so kushin suru jin dai no kse. See how I'm excited about this? So, I don't know, the way they, the way they put this is so boring. <laughs> I don't know why, but this is, this is how they do this. Yeah, this is usually how they do this. So basically, they want global um, entrepreneur. That's what they want. And then a global entrepreneur doesn't make much sense to you, does it? Well, when we, when we first uh, got this a letter of, of, um, of uh, they, they were looking for 13 universities to join this program, and then we were writing our proposal. We have no idea what the global entrepreneur is, because it doesn't make much sense, right? So we would like to say we, gonna, we will be aiming to develop the entrepreneur in global context, okay? Who can see, who can feel, who can think in a global context. That makes much more sense, I guess, right? So even though they say global entrepreneur, we will say entrepreneur in global context. It's, it's, it sounds really similar, but I think it, it transmits a little bit more than, uh, more than global entrepreneur. So that's what we're aiming. And we have a great mix of um, our student in here at KO, and we have even undergrad student and grad student, and we have people from outside of KO. So let's see hands. Okay, who are undergrad in KO? Undergrad, okay, all right. I know there's one teenage guy, right? Okay, you are 19? 18. 18, good. All right, you're the youngest, that's for sure. All right, we're gonna find out who the oldest No, <laughs> We won't do that because it will be some people, one of us, so yeah. Okay, so who's in the grad school in KO system? KO grad school? No, 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 regardless. Okay, okay, you guys are grad school, school students, okay. All right, that, okay, I, I want to see from hands from SDM students too, all the grad students, including SDM, okay. All right, thank you. Non-KO people, non-KO people, okay, who used to be in KO. Okay, good, good, thank you. Who are the faculty member and staff? These people, all right. Good, thank you. So this is your, your buddies today. I think we have a good portion of um, different background, and then I think we have about 
one third of a of a, a female population in the room. So I think that's that's really important to to um, keep up the diversity. And we have a variety of background. We have um, okay, who are science engineering, so to say, BK people? Okay, who are so to say BK people? Non engineering art. That means you. That's right. Yes. <laughs> All right. Good. So okay, we have a we have a good mix of, of that aspect too. So um, we're trying to um, keep that diversity in the room, and then of course diversity will help us run this program. All right. So we're going to talk about this for three days, and we're going to talk about different approaches to approach this. Who knows anything about this? Yes. It's very interesting. Yes, I think so too. <laughs> I think so too. Innovation is quite interesting. Anybody else? Who knows anything? Yeah, please. Something new. Something new, yes. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of hard to think about it. Ah, yes. It's not easy. Mm -hmm. Right. Yes. The definition is not fixed. Exactly. You can read 10 books and you'll find out 10 different definitions. Or you, if you read 100 books, you'll find 100 different, different definitions. But everyone out there is talking about this. And then this program, next um, funded program, we are aiming to provide the entrepreneurs or innovators who, are, who will aim for this goal, so to say. And then I would like to... Um, share our definition for KO Edge program because you know we do not we do not want to discuss something we don't know right so for now for this program we I would like to um, make a definition and we can or always discuss if you don't agree if you have any different op um, opinions then we can always agree we, we can always dis um, discuss but let's start from this definition so this is the definition taken from a book called um, Innovation Management. This is a very famous or popular book among MBA students in the United States. And then, um, oh, I forgot to put the, the work cited on the, the last sheet, I guess. I will put that up online later. Oh, yes, before I forget. So you can download all the materials in PD, PDF format from this Google short address. Um, so you can do that. It's up, it's, it's up online already, so if you want to download that now, then you can do it. So, okay, from this book, innovation is def defined as it is a process of turning opportunity into new ideas and of putting these into widely used practice. Okay? So there, there is two very important aspects in this. So, okay, it's turning opportunity into new ideas. So someone said, it's new, right, that you're right. And it's got to be something new, new idea. And there's a later half that many people are missing, probably. You need to put this into widely used practice, OK? So you cannot just claim your brightest, newest idea and say, hey, this is an innovation. No, that's an invention, OK? Or just a new idea. So. If, if you want to be recognized as innovation, then you need to put it in, into widely used practice. So this is the latest, and I think the clearest definition that I've ever seen. And here's Japanese version of this. で、これあの、玉田俊平太先生、これ日本人なんですけどね、俊平太。アウトフ通り日本人のおじさんなんですけど、韓韓製学院大学感覚MBAのあの教授の先生で、あの皆さんイノベーションのジレンマっていう本
if you understand English quite well, then I don't think a term innovation bugs you so much. I don't think so. But if you're Japanese and if you hear this term in a Japanese context, it bugs you so much because many people use this term very different, right? So I think for, for those who live in Japanese context, I think you need to um, remind yourself of this definition sometimes. And maybe you need to discuss with uh, someone you're talking to about the definition as, as such. And I really, really like Soshin uh, uh really much because it, it, I think it, it works pretty well. And then it, it means um, quite, um, I think people can understand this quite easily. So I like this term and then uh, maybe we should stick to this definition. And one more thing is that innovation, if you are doing innovation, you probably don't know you are in the middle of it, probably. Because innovation is defined retrospectively. So sometime in the future, people, a lot, large enough number of people will look back and say, hey, that was an innovation, right? So if you're running ahead of this innovation, then you probably don't know if you're in it or not, okay? Maybe it will be people around you in the near future or sometime in the future will say, hey, that was an innovation. So it's, I think, this is my, my, this is my understanding, I, I think innovation is a social phenomena which could be, which only could be um, recognized in, in a retrospective um, way, okay? So that, that's what I think. So my personal opinion is if you see someone saying, hey, I am doing innovation, I think he's a, he's a Yes, yes, right, you know that, right? He wants to make an innovation, but he's not doing innovation. That's how I think, okay? But I can give you some examples um, of innovation. So, let's, these are our favorite examples of Innovation. Ishiba Sensei. Yes. Before that, we want to confirm the photo. Even to get. Oh, yeah. okay. Yes, true. So, today we're going to be shooting some um, uh, photographs and videos. And are you okay with this? Or if you are absolutely not okay with this, please, I, I want to know that. Is everyone okay taking photos? Okay. All right, you're not secretly here. <laughs> Good. And you had a question? Anyone had a question? Okay. Yes. 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 Unfortunately, the Marrow Donor Registry is one of the most underrepresented donor programs in the world. And it's no wonder, really. 
Most people think that registering as a marrow donor is painful and complicated, but really, all it takes is a couple drops of blood. The only pain is actually finding a way to register. Now, you have to either take time out of your busy day to go to a special doctor, or order a registration kit online, pay $16 for it, and while you're at it, pay for the shipping. We've made it so difficult to register. It's amazing that a few good people out there care enough to jump through all these hoops just to save a random person's life. But the fact is, most don't. Imagine, though, how many lives could be saved if registering as a marrow donor wasn't so hard. What if we could turn a normal, everyday act into a chance to save a life? Introducing Help. I want to save a life. A package of over-the-counter bandages that also doubles as a simple marrow donor registry kit. So the next time you cut yourself shaving or shuffling papers or making dinner and you reach for a box of bandages, you'll have a chance to save someone's life. You just put a couple of drops of blood on the swabs, toss it in the prepaid envelope, drop it in the mail, and that's it. You're a potential lifesaver. This simple idea brought together a pretty unlikely pair. Help Remedies, a pharmaceutical company, and DKMS, the world's largest marrow donor registry. And then something pretty amazing happened. The TED conference chose it as one of their favorite ideas of the year, and even helped us launch it at this year's global conference. And since then, the whole world's helped us spread the word and share our story. And in just a few short months, sales of health bandages are already up more than 1900%. But amongst all these sales figures and media impressions and YouTube hits, there's really only one statistic that matters. Thanks to this little pack of bandages, Marrow registrations have nearly tripled. Who would have thought a few paper cuts could make a world of difference and actually save lives? So, so do you agree that this is an innovation? What do you think? According to the definition, it's you create something new and then you make it widely spread, right? So according to that definition, I think this is a great innovation and it's not about new technology, but it's a new approach, right? Um, so there is always a um, conventional approach for getting more donors, right? You can, you can just stand in, the, in front of the big station like Shibuya station and then call it out loud you know, for, for donations, but, uh, for donors. But these people, the health remedies, you can go their um, website and you can find uh, various versions of um, this, I want to uh, help whatever um, product, and it's really interesting. They had this um, before this um, uh, help, I want to save a life idea, and then they had a um, great partnership with this um, guy who was looking for a partnership to do, to realize his idea. So that's how it happened. And you can read about this in a, in a various website. So I think this is a great um, example of innovation. And then I, I wanted to show you this because many of you might have an idea that innovation um, includes or innovation has something to do with a technology. Okay. Yes, that's true. That's true in some cases, but it's not always true, okay? So that's the image that I, I really want you to um, focus on, or I really want you to understand that innovation does not require new technology, but it does require a new idea, or new concept, or new approach, okay? All right, so the next one is another um, example of what I think is an innovation. I hope you, I, I, I don't, know what if you agree this or not but oh before before I get into this um, who knows um, Black Friday the concept of Black Flag Friday okay let me explain so the third uh, the, the third week of November and then on, on that Thursday that's a Thanksgiving in the United States Thanksgiving you eat turkeys okay in Japan I don't know why but in Christmas you eat chicken right but that's only true in Japan. You don't do that in the United States. 
Many of my American friends ask me why we do that. I don't even know why. Maybe it's a KFC strategy that they successfully um, introduced that idea to Japanese culture. But however, back to the story. So that Friday, the right after the Thanksgiving, it's called Black Friday, and there will be a big, big sales in big sto stores like Best Buy, Target, and things like this. Okay, so big retail store goes on a big, big sales um, starting from this Friday to um, to the Christmas, and it's called holiday season. It's a holiday season shopping. So, and what happens in the United States is that, so of course the retail stores, the large retails, they sell the most in, in, in a year, okay? This season is the highest um, sales um, of, the, of the year. However, the small businesses, like, you know, um, it, it's usually called Papamam shop, right? So these shops do not sell so much because of the big retails, doing mega sale. So that's been a social issue for years and years in the United States. And this action was taken by American Express to um, somewhat um, mitigate this social um, issue. And then they did it in a successful way um, in terms of their business as well. So I think this is a great example of innovation. In 2010, American Express created Small Business Saturday, a new shopping day right after Black Friday to help small businesses get what they needed most, more customers. But for 2011, the goal was clear. Make Small Business Saturday more than just a one-off event and cement its place as an official shopping day during the holiday season. American Express couldn't do that single-handedly, so they rallied business owners, consumers, and public officials to help. First, they gave small business owners a toolkit to carry the day. American Express armed them with everything they need from a shop small badge, to posters, to social marketing tools. This digital kit featured a YouTube video maker for businesses to make their own ads, a Facebook page builder, and a way to launch online deals through Foursquare. Over 500,000 owners took advantage. Next, American Express reached out to get public officials on board. Communities and states from coast to coast declared their support. Even the Senate stepped up and passed a resolution declaring Small Business Saturday an official day, unanimously. Finally, American Express rallied millions of shoppers to join the movement by finding local businesses and pledging to make one small purchase. Pledge to shop small at Big Top Candy Shop. I want the business. At Juno Baby Store. Make the pledge to shop small. Please. Shop small on small business Saturday. So how big was it? You know, 20% increase. Our sales were up about 30%. 166% increase from last year. In the end, it became a top 10 trending topic on Twitter. The second annual Small Business Saturday reached 2.7 million likes on Facebook more than double the first year. Most importantly, 103 million Americans shop small, from California to Washington, D.C. This is Small Business Saturday, so we're, we're out here supporting small business. In just over a year, Small Business Saturday went from a day that didn't exist to a permanent fixture on the holiday shopping calendar. See you next year. So this was the second example. Again, there's no technology, well, some technology involved, of course. There was a Facebook and Twitter, but nothing new, nothing new. But it was a concept of um, Small Business Saturday, and then it was widely spread. And I, I, can, I can almost say this is artificial innovation, because they accelerated, they penetrated throughout the United States. I think the American Express was strategic and then they were pushing so that this concept will go through um, the many heads of the American people. So it's a little different with the health remedies version because health remedies took, took off by itself almost. But I think this American Express was well promoted and well organized so that it will go throughout um, in, in, in many people's minds, I guess. 
So I think this is another great example of um, type of innovation. And there's a third one. And so, okay, this is another really famous example. Of course, I'm pretty sure you know the Banco Popular de Puerto Rico, right? Because that's really popular. No way, right? Nobody knows Puerto Rico Kokumin Ginko, right? But okay, they were uh, very innovative in a way um, to, to turn their country around, okay? So I'll just show you this. Living off welfare has become a common way of life, so common that it is celebrated in the greatest salsa hit of all time, Marwanna, which translates to, I do nothing. belongs to a Gran Combo de Puerto Rico, the most famous salsa band in the world. As the largest bank in Puerto Rico, Banco Popular's success depends on the island's economy. So to help propel it in the right direction, it convinced the Gran Combo to rewrite history. On August 16th, a simultaneous broadcast roadblocked all of the country's TV and radio stations. The band unexpectedly released a new version of their song with new lyrics. This time, with a completely different message. took over the media. A day after, Banco Popular launched a PR campaign to make it the country's most popular song. The song made it all the way up to the top of the charts and generated over $2 million in earned media. In times when banks are particularly disliked, the campaign increased Banco Popular's image and reputation index to a record 80%. It also sparked a debate that grew into a movement of Puerto Ricans committed to the progress of the island. Interesting, <laughs> funny, yeah. For, for those quite didn't catch the content, これあのプエルトリコ国民銀行がプエルトリコってあの国民の 60% ぐらいが生活保護に引っかかっちゃうぐらいこう非常に勤勉な国民性だったと。でこれまずいということになって、まあ当然あの国の税制を逼迫しているということで、このプエルトリコ国民銀行があのプエルトリコで一番人気だった歌が最初に出てきた歌ですね。まあ何もせずにまあ。ゆっくり暮らそうやみたいなまあ国民全員ボブ回りみたいな状態なんですね<笑>その状態をなんとかひっくり返そうということである日突然ですねそのまあ今までのヒットソングだったあの歌をですね全部歌詞を書き換えてで、まあ、メディアを全部ジャックしてそれを一斉に国中に流し始めるということをやったとそうするとですねプエルトリコの人みんなとっても素直みたいでみんな働き始めるっていうことが起きましたよということで。これあのちょっとプエルトリコの友達がいる方ぜひ確認してみていただきたいんですけどこれ一説によるといやそんなそうでもなかったよっていう2チャンネルみたいなところの書き込みを見たりですねちょっと事実のことは分かりませんがまあこういうことが起きたということですね。So I think this is another great example of、um, how innovation could be,、um, could be planned or、um, actually activated. By somebody's idea and somebody's action. So I think this is a great example. So these three were、um, e x a m p l e of innovation. So you come up with something new, right? New idea, and then you spread so that it will be、um, acknowledged and appreciated as, as,、um, as a new norm or new habit, right? So that was the definition of innovation. So s h i n k u right? And next three videos. These are examples of innovative or innovative thinking or innovativeness. Okay? So I want you to try to think how is it different. But still, these are really, really interesting.
So this I showed you as an example of innovative thinking. Can anybody explain why this is not innovation but innovative? Anyone wants to try? Why this is not innovative? Yes? Yes? Ah, yes, exactly. Maybe the people get bored overnight, right? Yes. But quite a new approach. Quite a new approach. Because Conventional approach will be you putting up a sign saying you should trash your garbage into the trash can, right? That will be the conventional approach, but they took another road, another road. And it's interesting why these people are doing this, but I'm going to show you another video of this series, and I will explain a little bit about this. Again, this is the same series called Fun Theory. You can go to funtheory.com and you can see a bunch of these kind of videos. And so the insight behind this was it was in the it was written during the movie, but they thought if you add fun into um, daily activity or something that you want many people to engage in, people will do. Instead of forcing them, instead of making a rule to do, do so, um, you can add a little bit of funness to whatever activity that you want to propagate through people's mind, and you will achieve this. So that was the insight of these folks, Volkswagen. And the interesting part is that why they, these people, the Volkswagen, are doing something like this. So they have this insight, and they are trying to apply this so that they can help the kids in the back seat to put on more seat belts, okay? To get the more seat belt fastened um, kids on the back seat. これ車の後部座席の子供たちの
、えー、なんですかシートベルト装着率を上げるためにこういうことが使えないかなということをフォルクスワーゲンが考えてるっていうところが面白いですよね。I used to work for Honda. Maybe I should talk about myself, but I will in a, in a, in a few moments. But I used to work for Honda as an engineer. And us engineers think with, in, a, in a very, very non innovative way, most of the cases. Most of the cases. And we never had this kind of idea of not forcing the people to put on the seatbelts or put on the helmets. But、um, they had a very, very different approach of making it fun so that people will engage in this activity. So I, I thought, as an engineer who used to work for an automobile company, I think this is really, really innovative and it's a creative way to approach your target or your purpose. The third one is. A little bit different taste, but I will show you this anyway because it's really interesting. So, this was an、um, approach done by、um, Contrast, who sells a, a special kind of water. And then, of course, water <clears throat> is, a, is a commodity, and you don't make much difference. You know, it's very difficult to differentiate, right? Because everyone else is making the same water. But Contrast took this approach to give a di very different image of um, um, water. Which cannot be differenti different,、um, differentiated so easily. So, this was a French、um, commercial done in 2011. So, these three are e x a m p l e of innovativeness. Okay, innovativeness. And this is not something that's widely spread yet, right? And probably get, old, get, you know, get bored overnight or so, or maybe a couple days. At, at most. So, there are d i f f e r e n c e between innovative, being innovative and coming up with an innovative idea and then actually making innovation happen. So, in a KO,、um, KO Edge program, we would like to distinguish these two. Being innovative and aiming for innovation is something very different. So, the approach we can take is we can aim for innovative idea or solution. And we, we wish or we hope or, and we plan and we act so that it will become innovation at some point in the future. So, I don't think non innovative i d e a will become innovation, right? And maybe many innovative i d e a dies along the way before it becomes an innovation, okay? So, I think, I think many of we, us agree on that, right? Not all the innovative i d e a s u r v i v e s to become innovation. But I think all the innovation happened from maybe a small innovative i d e a Do you see that you know, there is no equal、um, equation here? So I think that's what we're trying to aim. So we would like to stick to this innovation、um, definition and then, innov and then distinguish between innovative and then innovation. Okay. Wow, I'm doing so behind the time. That's, that's okay. That's okay. 
All right. So here are three important things that we will be trying to achieve in this KO Edge program, and then this is what what we like you to be thinking. Think outside of the box. Okay. This is quite important to come up with innovative idea, and then of course business wise, because we are talking about entrepreneurship, we it's very important to present the new value proposition, okay? Not a, not regular value proposition, but it's a new and maybe innovative value proposition. It's very, very important to think outside of the box. The second point is that you need to orchestrate the implementation. We use the term orchest orchestrate because you may not be the only one doing this, right? You will probably, not probably, you will definitely find your buddies to start your new business or new idea, right? So we use the term or orchestrate the implementation. And of course you want to orchestrate so that you have a solid start, solid start with your new business idea or, or your new um, venture business idea. And the third point is accelerate penetration. So as we saw in American Express example, it did not took off itself, probably. So American Express carefully planned and carefully iterated, probably, to penetrate their new concept and idea throughout the continent of North America, right? So accelerate penetration is something you need to work on to aim for the growth. Growth of your concept, growth of your business, growth of your idea. So KO Edge program is basically, could be summarized as you aim for a new value proposition. So this is a KO Edge person, which is you. You aim for a new value proposition, and then you aim for solid start, and then you aim for growth, okay? So this is, I want, or we want you to be aiming. And then what you do is that you find insight so that you will achieve the new value proposition, and then you orchestrate implementation so that you will have a solid start, and you, I, I, I really want you to accelerate the penetration so that you will have a growth, okay? So this is cause and effect relationship that we want you to be thinking. And then you, we would like you to behave like this. So ideation, we will talk about a lot about this today, and then structuralization or organization, we will be talking about this in the second day about um, a, a, as a systems approach. And then this is something we cannot teach you. Think different. You always need to think different. You want to be different from somebody else's idea. You want to be different from somebody else's concept. This is not something we can teach. Okay? This is something we wish you have that. Okay? But we can teach you some ideation techniques, we can teach you some structuralization um, techniques and organization techniques, but we cannot teach you the thinking different mentality or the mindset. So um, our KO Edge pro program does not uh, necessarily um, aim for startup CEOs, but uh, we uh, would like to produce this type of person and various types of innovators and in various types of um, circumstances. So we have some students, right? And we have some a bachelor student and graduate student, and we have some people from large company. And you'd probably be surprised when you see their um, name cards or the, the mail sheet. Um, yes. And, and then of course, we want all of you to become um, innovators willing to make changes in the world. Okay? So this is what we aim. So this is the big vision that we uh, are have we have for KOH program. Can I ask you a question? Yes, please. Uh, I want to clarify the difference between hmm. innovation and innovative. Yes. Uh, for the first example of innovation, it, it was spread to all over the world. Second one is for the US. Mm -hmm. Third one is for spread for Yeah. Uh, and uh, uh, in uh, innovative example. It, it was uh, for, uh, maybe a town or uh, 
very limited area. Yes. So, uh, how large area uh, is it? Innovation mm. needed mm. uh, for one country or for one city or something. Great question. Great question. What do you think? I think uh, innovation, we can regard it as innovation if the idea is, is spread to the people who need it. Mm. Okay. So it doesn't matter how much people you're talking about, maybe. It doesn't matter the volume. Is that what you're saying? The volume? Yeah. The, num the number of people? Number uh, So it depends on mm. like, the market. Mm. Like you go. Yeah. Mm. So I don't. Uh, I cannot say, mm. uh, for example, uh, one million people is enough. Ah. I cannot say. Maybe. Right, right. Yes. How, how do you think? I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Maybe we can, if you, if we um, take maybe one family, family of five people, and make them happy with a new idea, then it, it is absolutely innovation for them, right? And so I think you're, you're absolutely right. It's all, it's relative. It depends on what you are aiming for. Yeah, and, uh, I, uh, I asked such a question because mm. uh, I was wondering the, uh, what is the difference between uh, innovation mm. and only just a temporary boom. Mm. I, ah. Yeah, I saw the third example yes. of the innovation yes. uh, in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. I thought it was just a boom, mm. uh, but uh, yeah. what makes it innovation? Very good question. I don't think there is an absolute answer for this, but my personal opinion is one thing is that volume of people, okay? It, it probably has to... Um, be more than a certain number of people. And not only a norm, like the uniform people, but people with some diversity. So for example, I think it's better, it's more innovation, <laughs> more innovation, I don't know if that works, but if it's more innovation if your product or service or whatever, your concept is um, admitted or um, appreciated over multiple countries. <laughs> Because now you're talking about more people, but not only the volume, but the culture-wise, language-wise, you're talking about more diverse people, right? So I think it's I think it's a multiplication of number, and then how much it's diverse, and then I think the duration. So Susan Boyle, who remembers her? Yes, was it an innovation? We thought it was for like a week or so, right? Because many people watched YouTube. And many people appreciated her as an as a angel voice or whatever. But it lasted only for a month or so, right? So I think the internet and YouTube you know, brought this phenomenon so easy that you can approach to 7 billion people instantly, right? But it doesn't last so much. So I think the, to define innovation and what is innovation and what is not is very, very difficult. But there is a, some parameter that we can think of. The volume, the number of people, and then the diversity that you're talking about, and then the duration. I think there is a, some combination of these three parameters. This is my personal opinion, and it's not in any um, paper or, or book. Maybe I should write a paper about this, but that's how I'm thinking, and we can, of course, discuss. Yes, thanks for asking this. Okay, so, this is a KOH program, so that was a, more of a, a person vision, personal vision, and this is more of a, what we offer as a program. So we expect you here. You have strong domain knowledge, I don't care what that is, engineering, science, um, art, whatsoever, but we selected you, I mean you um, applied us uh, with a strong background, and then 
we saw all your, all your resumes and we uh, um, acknowledged that you have some kind of entrepreneur mindset. You are not a CEO of a startup, but you do have entrepreneur mindset because you are here and in, in, a, in a holiday Monday, right? You're already an entrepreneur, I guess. So you have that. And then hopefully you have many international friends. I saw your resumes and then many of you have um, study abroad experience and work in abroad experience. And then I think this is very, very important to have a, to you to become an entrepreneur in a global context. So this is what you learn and do in this program, innovative thinking. We will teach you this or we will do this throughout the coursework. This is a three-day coursework. And then some of you will move into the project work. Um, it's going to be a short but um, another intensive um, project work. that You will be working in a um, project-based learning um, curriculum. And then that this is what you become. You will become a person who um, can bring the new value proposition. So that's a one capability out of strong domain knowledge. Based on that, you build up on that. And then you will become a new value proposition capability person. And then with your entrepreneur mindset, we will teach you some techniques in my new mindset. And you will become new business synthesis capability person. And then have many international friends um, attribute or skill, uh, we will try to convert that into interdisciplinary approach, a capable person. So this is the overview of what we're aiming as a KO um, Edge program. Um, and um, right, and then this is the scope of the KO Edge program. So because we are talking about um, because talking about the concept and then the, the the mindset, I wanted you to. Try to understand as much as possible. So I drew a lot of diagrams. And for some of you, it may make sense, it may not, but I hope it, it helps you somewhat. So this program has its scope set to all why and what and how domain. Okay? Because many seminars or many short programs do focus on how. Like how you ideate, like how you design, how you blah blah blah, right? But if you recall all the videos that I sent you, they're not talking about how, right? They're more talking about the mindset, how you think and how you approach. So our program has set scope set to why and what and how, in a, a, maybe in an equal balance. But we will talk a lot about why and what, and a little bit about how, because how will help you uh, in various situations. And um, of course, um, entrepreneurial mindset is essential in any of these domains. And then global mindset is also essential of any, uh, in any of these domains. So if, when you're thinking why and what, um, of course, you need to be um, thinking in the global context. So these are required throughout the program. But these all three domains will be covered. We will try to cover all of these three in a, in a KOH program. Not, we do not focus on how, okay? And because that will be very um, cheap and it will die in, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a couple years because hows will die really quickly. But whys and what doesn't die um, so quickly. So we will try to focus on three domains. And then we will um, talk about why it's important. Okay, we will talk about um, you creating your you coming up with new business idea as an entrepreneur. We will talk about why your idea is important and why you do it and then what question to solve and what goal to achieve. And then we will talk about how to solve your question and how to implement your idea and how to grow your idea. So these are things that we will cover in this program. Okay, this is another um, diagram showing you what um, KO Edge Person's Capability Structure uh, will look like. So, basically, we are trying to develop a um, KO Edge Person with new value creation capability. Okay? These are all capability. We would like you to become someone who can propose a new value, okay? and who can create a new value 
and then you who can monetize and who can manage that value creation. And oops. to achieve so, we would like you to be comfortable with interdisciplinary approach. Interdisciplinary approach. You are from most of you, I mean all of you are from different domains and different backgrounds, and we would like you to become comfortable working with different disciplines and then making it worse working together. Okay? So that's the interdisciplinary approach that we would like you to be familiar with. And then interdisciplinary approach is um, enabled by two basic um, thinking techniques. One is design thinking, that's what we will, we will be talking today. And then another one is a system thinking, that, which we will cover in 29. And then this is another pillar or another column that we expect you to have already, domain knowledge, okay? Because all of you are from different domains. Domain meaning somebody's from mechanical engineering, that's, that's myself, somebody's from art, somebody's from electrical engineering, somebody's from political science, those are your domains. Okay? This, you need this. Okay? If you want to become entrepreneur or innovator or whatsoever, you need to have certain domain. You can, please don't put your you know, innovator on your name, name card, okay? business card. That's not cool. That's not cool because innovator is not your job title. Okay? You, I want to, I want to um, express myself as a systems engineer who is entrepreneur as well, and probably innovator as well, okay? I hope you have that image too. And then business synthesis. So like I said in the, in the beginning, we do not cover the, all the MBA stuff. We will talk about MBA stuff, but we don't do that in an MBA uh, manner. We will cover that so that it will help you um, in uh, entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial um, activities. So business synthesis is a key word for our program. So basically, this is telling you uh, what we want you to become, okay? Strong in domain knowledge, which is, you are already, and then we will um, train you or we'll give you some exercise on system thinking and design thinking so that you will become interdisciplinary approachable person. And then we will talk about the business synthesis and basic techniques so that you can synthesize your business or design your business. And then for what? We want you to become a person who can create a new value. Okay, so that's the, um, our, our capability structure. Okay, so I'm gonna talk about the coursework. So the coursework, this is the short, intensive, or is it an intensive short? I don't care, but <laughs> it's a three-day workshop style coursework, okay? So this is what we aim. So this coursework um, is, in, we will, you will learn and do innovative thinking by design thinking, lectures, and exercises. And you will be familiar with the mindset and some tool set. And then system thinking lectures and exercise, and then we would like to be, you to be familiar with the way of thinking and some diagram drawing, and which is quite helpful. And then financial synthesis, or business synthesis, lectures and exercise. And uh, we would like you to become familiar with the concept and basic techniques. So um, in this coursework, you will learn the both mindset and tool set for design thinking and system thinking and financial synthesis. And then we, um, as a whole, we are calling it an innovative thinking. Okay? So, so for the coursework, I have colored uh, the stuff we will be doing more in the coursework. We will be covering system thinking, design thinking, and then business synthesis, uh, mindset and techniques. And then we, you will be exercising um, interdisciplinary approach, but not much about new value creation. That, because that takes more time. That, that is more time consuming. We need a project to do so. So we will leave that for a project work. So, but for all of you here, we'll do this um, letters in the white, and you will experience how you can approach interdisciplinary. So that's the goal of our coursework. And then there's a project work. And there are two types of project works. Um, we have some students from um, SFGs, right? I, 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 assume, I, I think, I suppose we have um, three or four students from SFG. Four, yes. 
And five, okay. So like I said, this is our first year program for a KO Edge, and then we are in a in a so to say of a, of a test bed or a pilot program mode. Um, so probably we will have a larger number of people coming in for the second year um, program because this year is the first our, our first trial, and then uh, we wanted to go carefully. I'm not saying you you learn less. I'm saying you learn more because we don't know what to what not to teach you and what to teach you. So we will do everything for you, right? Next year we will probably cut it down to half because I'm not going to squeeze it into three days probably. So you're lucky this year. And we have two courses for project uh, work. So SDM time PBL, you can read it out later. Uh, we will do it do this in a group work, five to six people, probably four for this year. And then for SFC type, um, you will uh, be conducting the project work uh, with your um, professor and then the mentor outside of campus. So there are a little difference. And then um, SFC, uh, it's a part of your, their coursework, so they will be credited. And then uh, for SDM type, uh, we do not give out credit. So it's, uh, it's more um, towards the people who are from outside of the KO system. So that's um, how we are different, SDM and SFC. And I'm not gonna get into the SFC detail uh, because I'm not quite sure about um, SFC detail. Um, we may have a professor coming in from SS SFC sometime to talk about the program. But, okay, so this is how, how SFC and then SDM type PBL, project-based learning, are different. So like, we said, like I said, we will be focusing on why domain, what domain, and how domain. But for SDM, SDM type PBA, we will be focused a little bit more on, or not, maybe I should say, you will be spending more time on why domain, why domain. Because as an entrepreneur, um, you're looking for your colleagues and um, somebody to support you, you need to have a very strong why domain. So we will be spending a little bit more time, you will be spending a little bit more time on this why domain to clarify and to structure and try to propagate that or communicate that to, to a stranger. And then for SFC type PBL, you, you will be focusing or you will be spending more time on how to solve and then how to implement, okay? I am not saying that both projects are equally focused on every single areas but this is you spending more time on different domains, okay? So your instructor will help you to develop these areas if you are in S um, SFC PBL, and if you're in SDM type PBL, uh, we expect you already have done some experience. If you, you already have some experience in how domain, okay, that, that's what we expect. So we have a, a little bit different expectation for um, two um, project-based learning. Okay, and I will talk about the SDM type PBL. So, so SDM type PBL aims these three things, new value proposition capability, new business synthesis capability, and interdisciplinary approach capability. And then we will do this um, through the course, uh, the project work. And project work will be done in collaboration. You will get in a project team of um, a multicultural and multidisciplinary members of four to five to six people, and then you will be thinking or approach like a designer, and you will think and approach your uh, problem or solution as a system, and then you will be thinking, um, you will not only be analyzing, but creatively designing your business. So that's what we expect you to do um, in the um, project work for um, SDM type PBL. And the diagram that I showed you uh, before now we are moving into this area because we will cover these three things in a coursework. Now we want you to be focusing on new value creation in a PBL. And then I would like to call it BYOD party. It's a bring your own discipline party. It's not BYOB. BYOB is bring your own beer party. So that's uh, you bring your beer to the party, that's a BYOB but it's a bring your own discipline party. So you will become a team 
um, with different discipline, discipline people, and I would like you to approach interdisciplinary and then um, try to create a new value. Okay? So this is what we will be focusing on, uh, on the PBL. And then there's another aspect that we will be adding on the PBL. Um, we will add a tip to improve English communication skill for non-English non -English native speakers. Uh, yes, non-English native speakers. So this KO Edge program and in the Edge program in general, all the 13 universities around Japan, um, there is the University of Tokyo, there is Kyoto University, there is Osaka University, Aritsumeka University, Waseda University, and more. <laughs> <laughs> you can go online and check. Um, we're all trying to um, do this, not all of them, but many of us are trying to do, run the program in English. And then at the end, I will show you the, the timeline, but at the end of this school year or the physical year in March, um, probably all 13 universities will get together and will do a presentation. Okay? And this will be um, done in English. So to be outstanding among the thir 13 universities, I, we would like you to give you some tip for um, English um, communication. I, it won't be a cheesy English um, class. It will be um, somewhat more structured and uh, interesting um, English um, improvement uh, techniques. Okay? So that will be added. So this is what it looks like when you get into the PBL. And so SDM type PBL requires you to be iterative in all of these domains and interdisciplinary among throughout these domains and then early validation I will talk about this later today and of course being an um, innovative thinker throughout in, um, of, in, in any of these domains and then you, be, you will be spending a little bit more time on the why domain so like I said you will be iterative interdisciplinary and then of course uh, focusing on early validation and then innovative thinking for all these domains. So that's what we what we would like to um, aim for um, SDM type project based learning. Okay, and um, so a little bit I will go a little bit quickly about the SDM type PBL. So this is what you do and deliver. So you will be in a team and you will be delivering very simple unfamiliar but convincing and fascinating business design result with new and innovative value proposition, coarse but solid looking startup plan, an ambitious but interesting growth prospect. Easy, right? Very simple. So I'm saying give me a great business design. That's what I'm saying. Okay. And then there, there's more that I'm, I, I've written, but you can probably re, um, read it later. I, I, I have described what is new and innovative value proposition, and I have described what is coarse but solid looking startup plan, and what is ambitious but interesting growth prospect. Okay? So this is what you will be delivering. You will try to deliver at the end of the project-based learning of the SDM type. Okay? And then to support you throughout this project work, we have a variety of um, instructors. Uh, I will, we will get um, them introduced to you, but we have, a, like myself, engineering science background people, but we're not um, normal science and um, engineering background people. We're engineering science background people who are more um, interested in complex and dynamic system, which provides new value. So that's who we are. We have business and management background people who are interested in synthesizing and managing new business model, which enables new value chain. And we have an information architecture background person uh, who uh, is interested in communicating regardless of language and discipline within global context. And we have a design background faculty member who are um, aiming for design and manage not only colors and shapes, but philosophy and principle of the deliverable. So that's, um, these are the instructors you will, you will be um, seeing. And then we are all, we all practice entrepreneurial mindset in a global context. So you will, I, I hope you, uh, you have fun talking with these people and um, you will get to know them um, pretty soon. And just a quick comment about the SFC type project-based learning. I don't uh, have much details, but um, this is uh, what they have. So they call the, 
they, they have the project in the middle, and then um, I think you are here, the participants, and then you will be teaming up with um, here, um, Kokunai Kyorukusaki. So that will be your mentor um, within um, Japan. And then, of course, your professor will um, help you. So you will be basically in a small team of you and professor or instructor and then um, the mentor. And after you've done a um, certain uh, amount of coursework or the project work in Japan, you will have a chance to go to um, field work in field work overseas. So that's the, the program structure. And um, that's that's all, and I don't have much more detail, but um, you will probably, if you're from SFC, um, you will probably hear from um, Ikeda Sensei or um, uh, somebody else uh, pretty soon. Okay, so, okay, the schedule. So this is a schedule that we have. Um, intensive three-day course work um, is to get you ready with the right equipment. So that's what um, this is for. So some of you will um, be, uh, just be attending the coursework, and then, some of you will be attending the project work. So um, we will uh, probably choose about 16 people to stay with us, and then we will, um, we need to ask the uh, um, rest of the people to, uh, to maybe, hopefully, join us next year, because we, like I said, we cannot handle many people this year. We can just handle about 16 people for this year, because this is our first challenge. So, and then um, for those of you who remain for uh, project work, we will have um, KO Innovation Forum, which is on March, and we will have an EDGE Forum, which will be in, in sometime in March that uh, 13 schools will get together and then do presentation, and we'll do probably be doing the, some competition all together. So that's what we're, uh, this is what it looks like. And then um, there's the long-term perspective. So this is our first year, or zeros year, and then second year, and then third year. So this is you participating this year, right? And we want your friend, or you, I want you to recruit them to participate next year. Because we really want good student or a good participant to join the program. Um, who are willing to become global um, concerned entrepreneur or entrepreneur in global context. And then we rely on you to recruit um, all those candidates. And you become a mentor probably next year. And then another uh, new thing we'll, 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 that will happen next year is we're going to have participants from overseas. We are already talking with um, India and um, Indonesia. Actually, Three faculty members just came back from Jakarta last night. <laughs> so, they're tired. If you see them sleeping, that's them. <laughs> Alright? And then, your friend will recruit a friend of yours, and then he or she will participate in third year, and then you can come back as a mentor, maybe instructor, or even angel with money. <laughs> okay? So, this is what we are calling KO Edge ecosystem. Okay, so you don't just go out and you know say bye bye after after this three day course or the PBL. We would love you to come back. Okay, we would love you to come back. And so, after several years, uh, we expect all of you to become KO Edge alumni, and then um, I hope we can keep in touch. Uh, for uh, various opportunities, and uh, we would like to have um, continue our conversation. Um, not only for three years, maybe um, after that too. Okay, so this is the overview of the course uh, coursework and then the project work. And there, like I said, we need to select some people among you to uh, come to our project work. So this will be the the big picture of um, KO Edge program, and then we are expecting 16 participants for the SDM type DBL, and you are all considered considered as a candidate. So you are all considered as a candidate right now, and will be evaluated according to the selection criteria. So you know, I, I, you know, I may sound harsh, but we need to do this. Okay.
Okay? So, among you, we will ask um, about 16 of you to join our project-based learning. You will be the guinea pigs. You're the first batch. So, guinea pig, Morumoto. Yes. Guinea pig, Morumoto. Morumoto, the English word is not the same. Did you know? Okay. So you'll be that. <laughs> okay. So this will be the selection criteria. So I wanted to clarify this is what we will be doing for three days. Okay. Based on your intensive short course works performance, participants will be evaluated individually with basic points and special points. And these are uh, basic points. Team contribution. We will um, qualitatively measure measure your team contribution. So you will be working in teams, so we will be uh, moderately looking at your discussion, how you accommodate, how you facilitate, and how you motivate. Okay? This is what we'll be looking at um, qualitatively. And then class contribution, quantitative measures uh, by instructors. So I already have spoken, uh, many of you have spoken already. Uh, we will be moderately counting number of questions and number of comments and number of presentations. Um, within these three days. So these will be the basic points so that we will have uh, more um, good guinea pigs to play around in the PBL. Or, you know, we, we just want to keep our um, project-based learning level um, in a certain level so that um, uh, people will, many of you will satisfy with the program. And then the special point will be um, given to those who will perform outstandingly a, as, a, as a person with strong background, for example, like a very deep domain knowledge or expert talent or um, expert knowledge. So these will be um, qualitatively measured by instructors because we are, there are so many instructors around you uh, who will be uh, moderately looking at that. And then um, uh, the entrepreneurial mindset is something that we're looking for as well. Um, and outstanding performance as a global context-minded person. And then another thing is that um, outstanding performance as an innovative-minded person. So these are things that we are looking for. Okay? And I hope, I know most of you have it, and we're looking, looking for um, those who are, uh, who are more, um, who, who are with more characteristic like this. And then the selection result will be uh, sent out by December 1st, so the, the next day, right after the third day. And then we will ask about 16 people to come join our project-based learning um, course. So that will be a 16 people, okay? Okay, so I have been talking for about 90 minutes. Any questions? Yes. Uh, I to the criteria yes. the selection makes us pressure. Mm. Why do you uh, make it clear? Oh, okay. Because, <laughs> because I didn't want to be unfair. Uh -huh. Right? Is it <laughs> pressuring you so much? Some, some may feel. <laughs> some may feel, yes. Please don't. Because you're all capable. We know that. We're, you're all capable, but you know, what we need to do is we need to have a good guinea pigs. <laughs> no. So this is what we want. Okay, we want, to, this is our first year trial. We want a lot of feedback from the participants. We need what to, what to improve. We need to what to add. We need to what to fix, okay? So we need somebody we can communicate. We need somebody who can understand what we're saying, all right? So that's why we are setting this criteria. And I'm sorry, some of you, you may feel this is kind of pressured, but yes, this is how we do this. Yes. Maybe this doesn't suit the Japanese context, but if you, I don't know, if you go abroad, this is normally how its course is provided, right? But at least it's clear, right? At least it's clear how you're graded, right? So, yes. Uh, so you, uh, in the page side number 51, you yes. talked about the special points. Yes. And then I see the first one is kind of unfair because it talked about the, how the student have the strong background, like yes. expert knowledge, right? But actually, I'm a bachelor student, so I don't have enough knowledge, than, the less knowledge than the master student. So 
uh, I think that's how I feel. So, do you have any comments on it? Are you a good cook? Ah, sorry. <laughs> Are you a good cook? Uh, I hope so. Okay. Yeah. I think you're better better cook than a graduate student. So we're not talking about your your knowledge on the academia side. We're talking about you know different expertise. So when we say special knowledge or special outstanding performance, I'm not talking about just the um, the grades on your the paper test. Okay. I am. We are talking about um, different background, not um, like engineering or science, but maybe your great surfing skills. Right. Maybe you're really good at talking to people. Those are considered to be strong background. Okay? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yep. Yes? Uh, I don't feel any pressure, but uh, yes. would you give us your uh, feedback after training? Yeah, we can do that. Well, right. Um, right now, we are not planning to do one by one, but if you uh, would like to have that conversation, we're more than happy to do that. Yeah? Okay? All right. So, sorry it took me long, longer than I thought, but I really want to clarify what we're doing and where we're going, and then I hope you agree what we're doing, and then I hope it sounded kind of fun or pressure. <laughs> but, yes, um, so basically we, are, we will be covering three things. So design thinking approaches, system thinking approaches, and how you synthesize your businesses. So these are three aspects we will be covering, and I hope um, that will help you in uh, many ways. All right, let's take a break. Let's take a break, about 10 minutes. Let's take a break until um, 20 minutes before 11, so um, 10.40, okay? 10時 40分 まで休憩にして、それから再開にしましょう。The restroom is outside, if you go straight, that way, and then don't go outside the door. It's it's right next to the door, it's to your right. Okay. All right. Let's take a break. And I'm sorry, I, we didn't have an English version of this, so I will just leave in, in Japanese. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, ich heiße. Kennen Sie Deutsch sprechen? <laughs> oh, nine, nine, nine. <laughs> okay, my name is Seiko Shirasaka. Uh, Seiko is a uh, success in Japanese, but in, in English it's uh, oh, sorry. it's uh, Seiko chan. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's also okay because you know this is the same as the watchmaker Seiko. Yes, yes. So when I visit foreign countries, it's very easy to remember my name also. In Japanese, of course, it's very easy. So um, my background is uh, uh, space systems engineering. So I work for the Mitsubishi Electric Corporation for uh, 15 years as a space systems engineer. And my uh, biggest, longest project was a HTV. It's a coordinator in Japanese. It's a it's to transfer vehicle to the International Space Station to carry a human water for the astronauts. And the, uh, uh, also, uh, maybe, most famous project is uh, Ichibiki, 
to into a system. It's a Japanese GPS system. Uh, I was a member of the uh, uh, start, starting up that project in Mitsubishi uh, Electric Corporation. And after I worked for 15 years, I changed my career to the academia. I'm teaching. I started to teach a systems engineering in the KOS team. And also now I'm also teaching the design project with other faculty members for the design thinking and innovative thinking. My uh, specialty or my uh, major uh, research topic is uh, architecture. It's a, a kind of the design activities for the new system. Okay, and uh, what shall I say? It's okay. Are you entrepreneur? Uh, <laughs> 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 I have an entrepreneurship, maybe a mindset. <laughs> but yeah, I have not. Uh, many of the uh, faculty members have the, their own company. I don't have. But yeah, I work for a very new project. And I have the experience to work for the uh, through all life cycle of this project. So that's a mind. So yes, maybe background. Okay. He's really modest, but this HTV transfer, the, the HT, H2A transfer vehicle is the, the first, the world first unmanned vehicle went to ISS. So he designed a safety system for this vehicle. So that's great entrepreneurial mindset, I think. Thank you. And uh, just last night, I came back from Japan. Maybe <laughs> sleepy, <laughs> 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 but so please enjoy today. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Okay, hi, it's, it's me again. You can just call me Kane. My real name is Kananori, but it's really hard to pronounce. It's first four letters, Kane. I studied in the United States for um, um, several years, and I, I actually lived in the United States for seven or eight years. And um, I went to the University of Minnesota. Who knows this school? You do. You went there. Yes, it's a cold place, minus 30 degrees in the winter. So ice hockey was the major sports there. So that's what I used to play. And after that, I got my first career as an engineer in Honda R&D. And I was at, at the Motorcycle R&D Center. And I first started out as a mechanical designer for engines. So uh, who ride motorcycles? Oh no. <laughs> Again. Okay, it happens a lot here, but. So I was an uh, engine designer for uh, big motorcycles, um, such as, um, what is it, 1300cc, it's a, it's a large American style, motorcycles, and um, so that was uh, uh, my first career. And then um, my, I, had, I was transferred to um, electrical personal mobility um, R&D department, and I was a project manager for this weird electric mobility that is not in the market yet and will probably never be in the market. <laughs> yes. So people blame us for developing toys. <laughs> Essentially, yes. But, but we are aiming a really high goal. So, um, and then I, I will talk about what, we, what I was doing and what my teammates are doing right now, later on today. But, um, I was um, not just designing uh, personal mobility, but we were, we were trying to design a business around it or how people use this new mobility. So that's, that's what I've done in Honda. And then after that, I um, changed my career. Um, I went to uh, Tokyo University and I was working on a microsatellite development. I was a project manager for microsatellite development and I was uh, in charge of um, different um, ground system and then a whole system design. And I was with uh, Professor Shinasaka or Seiko. Um, we were trying to develop a new uh, microsatellite, which is only a 50 kilogram, kilogram, and it can sit on your table. It's only a 50 centimeter by 50 centimeter and 50 centimeters. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, like a box. Okay? It's, a, it's a little, big, uh, little bit uh, bigger box than you usually send your stuff to, but it's, it's essentially a box. It's really tiny. And we were trying to uh, develop a methodology to design this new satellite. And also we are trying to expand the business um, possibility of the space use or space utilization. And um, this project is still running. It's, 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 a, it's a great race run by many competitors around, around um, the world. I think the lead um, competitor here right now is a Skybox Imaging. Who knows Skybox Imaging? Okay, 
Okay, SDM people and maybe you're geek enough to know. <laughs> right, Skybox Imaging is a company, the, the venture company who was bought by a Google a couple months ago, yes. Was it 50 million or how many yen? A lot of dollars, <laughs> yes, a lot of dollars. So it's, it's actually taken off. I mean, it's, it's, a, it's actually, this business is happening. So my engineering background is, is really solid. I mean, I, I have designed mechanical, engine mechanical designs. And I also designed electric mobility. I also designed a satellite. But not only designing things, but I had to design the businesses and what will happen around these things. So that brings me to KOSDM teaching design project, teaching course like this. And then also, um, I have a class in systems engineering. We do a lot of research with uh, many different companies around Japan on systems engineering. I will, we will talk about a little bit about systems engineering uh, today and then more on next second day of the of the program and then of course uh, I I own a company and I'm a partner of another company so I have uh, two companies um, of all of my relation and then um, yes I do a lot of things outside of um, academia as well all right and I will be the lead instructor for the KOH program just call me K all right so our software is now Right, yes, our satellite is now on orbit. It was launched in March 24th, no, no, May 24th. It's, it's out there and it's quite exciting. Yes, yes. great, nice to meet you. Sawadee <laughs> 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 Club? Okay. Hello, good morning, Sawadee Club, Island Luggage. <laughs> uh, I'm Yoshi Kazutomita. Uh, please call me Yoshi, but uh, Yoshi is already here. So please call me Tommy. Or, uh, or, uh, most esteemed people call me Tommy Town because I'm getting more like a Kumamo. Do you know Kumamo? <laughs> so everything okay. So I'm a well lecturer of the KOH program in SDM, and we, uh, I'm teaching it. Same class uh, with Spotlight member. So, my expertise is in business. Is business. Uh, I had really unique experience. Uh, I have started up several companies, several business. A CEO and their director. So, how many? Yeah? Uh, maybe eight. <laughs> maybe eight. But I'm running now seven company. But the company is. So, so sad memory. <laughs> so, uh, my experience will help you to learn about uh, how to start up your business. Maybe I hope. So, uh, before starting KOH program, uh, I'd like to tell you about the uh, entrepreneurship mind mindset. Uh, from my experience, uh, what you will need. There are three. The three. The first. Think innovative, think innovative, always, always. And then build solid logic, build solid logic, always, always. And finally, express your own passion, always. That's always very important. It's so simple, it's so simple, but I think this is, uh, there are essential mindset, essential mindset. So, please keep in mind, okay? There are two type entrepreneurs in the world. One is a, yes, succeeded entrepreneur. <laughs> Other is, yes, failed entrepreneur. What is difference? What is difference? So, how can you get it? Different, different things. So you are here to get it, okay? I hope you find your own way to tackle complex problem in your field through this program. Welcome to this program, everyone. Enjoy it. Thanks. Jumbo. <laughs> <laughs> Many of you may know you, right? 
It's konnichiwa in Swahili. <laughs> well, uh, my name is Hiro Shashiguchi. Konnichiwa. Uh, I have 20 years uh, business background, and uh, I will uh, have a lecture on Saturday about business synthesis. I would like to ask you a favor. Don't care my table English, okay? <laughs> Don't care grammatical error. Don't care pronunciation fluency, okay? Do care just what I want to say. I want to say. And translate my table English into right English inside your brain, okay? <laughs> that is you guys with computer. Okay? Don't think. Fear. <laughs> it's a word by who? Uh, Lucy. Yes, Lucy. Right. Okay. Anyway, uh, I started my uh, career at the uh, car company, Mercedes Benz, and uh, I did uh, management consulting for car dealers for eight years and quit, somehow quit the job and got a uh, huge amount of borrowing from bank with high interest rate, <laughs> then get, went into uh, the United States to get an MBA degree from uh, Dartmouth College. I went back to Japan and worked for Accenture as a management consultant and quit Accenture somehow and got uh, another uh, huge amount of borrowing from bank, slightly uh, low amount of interest rates, <laughs> and started my own uh, consulting company, and working for a private equity fund for uh, turning around those big, uh, staggering companies. And uh, at the Tableware uh, production company, I was working for that company as a uh, management, managing director, and at them, uh, I uh, developed new business with new product, with new uh, services and brand. So called also, I will explain about it a little bit on the sub, sub day. And uh, based on that experience, I, together with Tago-san, tago -san is uh, another lecturer from design side, design background. Uh, he's not here, but he will be here. Uh, we wrote this design management. Any of you have read this? Wow, thank you. I believe this. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> uh, this is a book for you guys. I believe it. And this is very uh, uh, essential, but very uh, useful book. Then, uh, well, welcome to Edge program. Uh, I think the inside classroom discussion, not discussion, inside classroom lecture, getting lecture is not so important for you guys. Discussing with your teammates and discussing with your lecturers throughout program and outside of classroom and after this program is far more important for you guys, right? So, I so, so excited about the, uh, discussing with you guys inside here and in the past. <laughs> <laughs> of the past program, okay? Thank you for coming. Enjoy. Mingalaba. Do you know Mingalaba? What is it body? It's Myanmar language. Myanmar language, hello, good morning, it's Mingalaba. I visited Myanmar two years ago and I met many ministers, statesmen, and government officials and university professors to introduce Japanese space technology or Japanese satellite system to enhance the, uh, the Myanmar people's life or Myanmar people's safety. 
So I have basically an engineering background, the same company working for as a professor Shirasaka Seiko. And I, was, I used to be a satellite system engineer many years ago, and I designed many satellites still flying in orbit. And after that, I worked as a public relations or commercial department in my company, Mitsubishi Electric Company, still closely related to space business. And after that, I moved to some organizations who worked, uh, the company worked for the Japanese government. And uh, during these five, day, five years, I visited many countries in Africa, Asia, North America, South America, Europe, to introduce Japanese satellite system and also the Japanese satellite utilization technology. So I met so many people and I introduced many benefits working together with Japan and I heard the, uh, his issues regarding space. So I have almost 30 years background in space related activities and not only the designing the satellite, but also the public relations or uh, business enhancement. So just only uh, the space issues, but I have so many point of view regarding one domain. This is my characteristics. And now I started to work in this AO University just last April. I don't have um, long experience in university, but before that I used to teach systems engineering in my company, so I have some technical background in systems engineering. So, anyway, so I hope you should enjoy these three days. And I don't have any lectures in front of you, but I will walking through the paper and taking so many pictures, so please don't hesitate to talk to me. Thank you very much. So these are the three words, only three words I know in, in Korean. And I stop here because I have a genuine Korean girl. Was <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, it right? My answer is okay. Um, so welcome to KO University. Um, as um, it says, I am a graduate of the KO University long, long ago, and I spent like 10 years since uh, junior high school. I spent um, 10 years in, in this in K University. And after working many years, I came back to school to, to study the system design and management to take the master course. And my, uh, my background, um, after graduation as a, a master degree, I started uh, my career as a project researcher. And I'm, I am employed here uh, to work on a project funded by uh, education ministry. And doing, um, I engage in the uh, innovation, innovation, innovative thinking education. And my background is um, information architect or design. And are you familiar with this word, information architect? Nobody? Okay. Um, it's about the, the why and how and what to deliver in a um, sentence and, and especially in, in translation and website design content contents. And I'm doing that for um, like 20 years in translation to deliver the, the most of the, the ideas um, in other language structures in the best way. And in the context of web website design, I started in 2000, in the year 2000 when I started my own very small business as a 
uh, website design company. And what else? They talk a lot, so I, I do think I need to talk more. <laughs> um, she, I, she also came up from the uh, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I spent uh, one day, one, one night, one night. <laughs> one night uh, in Jakarta, using, uh, utilizing a lot about my network in <laughs> <Kilo Moment. laughs> I Actually, we attended uh, uh, Mitakai. Do you know about uh, Mitakai? It's a big alumni group of Keio University, and all the all the graduates, graduated students, and many people like. Um, I heard that there are 350 million people. <laughs> I don't know. A lot of people are in the alumni, and there are um, Keio, Mita, uh, no, no, Waseda, even Waseda Mitakai. You know, you know <laughs> does it make sense? <laughs> Waseda Mitakai is uh, for the, the people who have graduated from Keio University working at Waseda University. Okay? <laughs> so um, we, we were trying, um, and then Jakarta Mitakai. We were trying to have connections with the people actually working in Jakarta or other uh, area in Asian countries. Actually, last night, uh, the, the Mitakai was for the ASEAN countries. ASEAN Mitakai is called ASEAN Mitakai, and all the, yeah, we have ASEAN Mitakai. <laughs> all the um, Mitakais from not only Jakarta, but uh, Singapore, uh, Thailand, many, Know, other other Asian countries got together, and also uh, many people actually came from Japan. <laughs> so we had a connected connection with many local uh, people, big local um, companies that have many people, local people, actually working for that companies. And in that way, we were trying to uh, connect with the you know, good candidate, candidates to this program so that we can recruit for the next year. And um, my uh, main, main work here as a, in this project is to engage in the discussion of the plain English, <laughs> as he had explained in that, uh, uh, in 30, like 30 minutes ago, I, I have, um, studied uh, plain English. Um, do you know Kelly Ito? He's a, a teacher of English writing. And I think he is the most and the best teacher, Japanese teacher, right, for the English writing, because he has uh, wrote more than 50 books for the English writing. And I studied plain English and uh, here, I think I'm going to um, give some kind of support to to make your ideas delivered clearly, and especially in the presentation, in the so that you can be an outstanding team in the forum that's going to be that's going to be held in, in March next year, and also um, people call me. COO, meaning Chief Okasan Officer. <laughs> <laughs> so you can call me, uh, Kyo uh, my, my name is Kyoko Watanabe, <laughs> and you can call me uh, Kyoko or CEO, whatever you want to call. <laughs> so that's all for the presentation, and, and I hope you all enjoy this program. Thank you very much. We do have um, several TAs helping this class running. Um, where is my TA? Here's one. <laughs> okay, Hirose san or Tsuyokon, is he's a first year student at uh, SDM, and we have Suja, another um, master's first year student, and then we have Narita, who were once bit by Habu. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> so ask him about this story. It's crazy. He went to Okinawa and Habu bit him. <laughs> he survived. <laughs> this is no joke. So. Yes, you, yes, it's Talk serious. All right. So now it's your turn. All right. I want you are in a in a table of um, several people, and I want you to introduce yourself to me. You already probably did. 
So, but I would like you to try to introduce your, yourself again. And then please, let's have a nickname, because it, it, that way it's, it's more easy. Because we have a quite a variety of, of ages and um, background and then discipline, so it's, it's nice to have a um, nickname so that we can talk flat. And um, if, if possible, tell your team about one innovative solution that you have encountered recently, okay? Any kind, a product, service, strategy, management style, whatever. Okay? And if you don't have any, then say, I don't have any. That's okay. And after you've introduced yourself, please give your name, your, your team an awesome name. Okay? It's got to be awesome. <laughs> All right? So please give your name, give the team an awesome name. All right? So I'll give you about 15 minutes. I think that, that, that'll be a plenty. Um, so don't talk too much. <laughs> a minute or two uh, per person is just enough. And then please come up with some awesome name for your innovative team. All right? Okay. Now um, I'm going to set up the timer so that he can keep track of the, uh, track of the time. All right. You can start. Japanese speaking people, so I will speak in English, but if, you, if your table doesn't have anyone, anyone speaks English, um, but then that's okay to speak Japanese. I, I don't care, okay? Choose your language. So sometimes right. help. Actually, I really like to do I was when I was a student, I was studying Tokyo East, Chico, Tokyo, 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 I was the topic itself was really interesting for me, and actually relates to our work, but I think it's our work. So, it's not just a good 
フランス語で、フランス語喋る、フランス語ぐらいの大体同じぐらいなんですけど、大学入ってからフランス語で、えー、
Discussion on your team name, and then I want all the teams to present your team names. So write it down on the piece of paper you have on your desk. Are you all ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is every team ready? Are you guys ready? Okay. Are you all ready? Okay. Let's. I, I don't care which team to start, but I want to hear your team name and why you came up with that name. All right. Who wants to go first? All right. Go ahead. Uh, our team name is this. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> this, is, this is called Akari Plus. Okay. Except me, they have something in common. Her name is Akari, and she's studying about uh, optics. Okay. I mean, the light thing. And he's studying about solar. Okay, they have something in common about solar or light. Okay. And then it so, like, looks like something like inside or. Mm. Ideation, but actually I don't belong to this team. <laughs> I don't have anything in common about light, so I just came here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is our name. Akari Plus is our name. Okay, so you're just a little plus. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's go to this team in front. Yes, you guys. Um, Okay, why, why is it toy box? Well, because the, this thing is, uh, I want to be a little bit so the idea is uh, this thing. Related to some toys. For okay, you found a lot of toys yeah. related to the innovative solution? So we can imagine the toys. Okay. So, uh, and maybe you, before you said that, I don't know the box. Mm. So, we combine it. Ah, okay. I see. All right. Thank you. Okay, let's hear from the team in the back. So, <laughs> so our team name is Mameto Imo. What? <laughs> so the reason why we we decided this name is when we talk about the innovative solution. Mm -hmm. So, so most of people talk about that. 
natto and cassava. Okay. So uh, the area is like there. So we have the like, same the common topic. So then we decide Mamet or Imo is a may, might be a good team name. So and then we understand this team name like the Mame is going like you know. Jack, you know, Jack the Mame no Ki, that story, right? <laughs> yes. And the Mame is going, uh, growing, so uh, yeah, it's going to up to the sky. And the Imor is going to, is going to grow in underground, so okay. yeah, maybe our idea can be, ex uh, can be widespread to <laughs> everywhere uh. we want. So I, then I decided Mame this name. All right, thank you. <laughs> I think this is my first time seeing two vegetables in one team name. <laughs> Good, thank you. Let's hear from this team. Okay, first we we made a great great and awesome group name. So please guess what's, what's our team team uh, team name? And we will give five five uh, backgrounds, five backgrounds. So please guess our name. Uh, our Four group names. names. Four Four names. names. <laughs> first, we have uh, international backgrounds. Right? Yeah, we are very flexible. Any uh, background is okay, everything is okay. Uh, so we are team, so that's why we should mix This is very tough work, so we need energy and this can make our food and be happy. <laughs> <laughs> Just forget about it, okay? Just have fun. All right, good. 
Maybe I'm responsible for that, but... All right. So before we get into lunch, I would like to cover the basic three concepts that we would like to talk in this KO Edge program. Um, so, like I said, like it, like I said in the beginning, I already sent you out the email um, telling you what are three concepts and then um, how we would like to um, transmit that to you. Um, so, it's basically um, design thinking and it's uh, empathetic and focuses on what people really value. So, that's what I think that's what's really essential about design thinking. So there are so many being discussed about design thinking, and you can read so much about design thinking. But if you um, look at uh, what David Kelly says in his book or in his interview with um, 60 Second and ABC, this is what he's actually saying. Okay, you uh, you want to be empathetic to your users, maybe to your stakeholders, and focus on what people or human really value. Okay? So this is, I think, basically it. And then he calls it design thinking, it's human-centered, and so on. But I think we can phrase it like this. The design thinking, the essential, essential of design thinking is such. And this is my understanding. But this is very familiar with us Asian people, I guess. I think I, I used to, I grew up in the United States, and I had a education. I went to elementary school in the United States. I went to, um, I got my bachelor's degree in the United States, but I, I, when I whenever I see a um, text like this, I always it always reminds me of Asian people, because I think Asian people in general are empathetic, in general, compared to many of my non-Asian friends, and then I think um, many Asian people are more focused on the, the values. Not on the not it's a, it's not money wise value it was the, but the essential values like such as like family values and friendship values and things like this so I think design thinking has a lot in common with Asian culture and Asian background so that's how I think and another um, approach we're talking about is system thinking or systems engineering to be specific because like you heard from us Shizaka Sensei and Yoke Sensei and myself are um, system engineers who develops large and complex systems such as satellite or uh, electric vehicles and we do it with certain approach and so this is how I put it my system engineering or system thinking understanding it's about understanding the elements and also how they are interrelated and behave as a system okay so there's uh, one great phrase that I love about system the collection is not a system. If you collect the parts, it does not become a system. You have to design your system as a system. So this is what I really like about system thinking. You need to design as a system to have a system. You cannot just you know, bring a bunch of parts together and call it a system. It won't work like that. Did you see the um, animated movie of talking about systems engineering? He, um, it has analogy to the human body. Yeah, you saw the movie. Yes, I think that 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 is essential. Human body. If you take, if you just tweak small part of the human body, it won't work as a human body. Human will die, right? It work as a heart in a harmony and in, in, it behave as a system. You cannot miss any element in that. So I think that's a really essential of how you think system, how you approach system. So that's system thinking. And then business synthesis is we're still working on how we work, how we put this into words, but analytical techniques of businesses and finances are truly powerful when it is combined with synthetical mindset and approaches. So I know many of you have very strong background in um, business or financing, but it's truly powerful when in the context of entrepreneurship when it is combined with synthetical mindset. You design from scratch, okay? You design from scratch. You're not giving a balance sheet to evaluate, okay? You need to create. You're not giving certain number of customers and you need, you need to calculate how much percentage you can earn from this group of, of the pool of customer. You need to think who you want to talk to and who you want to engage to, engage in. Okay? So synthetical mindset and approaches are really, really important to make analytical techniques, analytical techniques in 
businesses in finance even powerful when you work as an entrepreneur. Okay? So this is the third aspect that we would like to cover. And I would like to talk a little bit about KOSDM and why we do this and why we're capable of this, why we, we think we are um, uh, we, 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 we can do this. So KOSDM has strong background in design project for master students. So we've been running this um, class since 2008, which when we this, um, established, we, if we started our graduate school in 2008. I think we're the youngest graduate school among um, KO system. And we have been um, running this design project. So this is a project-based learning course, um, basically doing what you will be doing, a partial and then we have been in collaboration. We have been in collaboration with Stanford University since 2008 and MIT uh, since 2008. So Stanford people, um, namely uh, Professor Clark Bader, he has been um, giving us, um, providing us with design thinking and more creative thinking approaches. And then MIT, uh, namely Professor Debeck, he has been giving us lectures on system thinking how you can approach um, things as a system. So we were in a close relationship with these two folks from these two prestigious universities in the United States. And also recently we have um, another alliance with uh, Adelaide University of Australia. Uh, we have a uh, professor Oki Bosch uh, collaborating with us. He's from uh, Adelaide University's business school and he has been teaching us how to approach uh, participatory systems approach and things like this. So uh, we are um, in a close relationship with international partners, and then we've been running this design project for um, seven, seven years so far. And then every year we have about more than 70 students. So now our graduates, or, or the uh, we call it survivors, survivors of the design projects, we have more than 450 students. And then who are survivors of SDM design project in this class? Yay, they just survived. <laughs> they just finished last month, right? Did you survive? Mm, I hope so. Okay, <laughs> did you survive? Yeah, okay, all right, They're, they survived. So they know what, it's, what it is like. So this is the, the, the little bit of um, design project. So it's, about, it's a six month course run in uh, different um, phases. So the first phase is the learning phase. It, you spend a month in this classroom learning 32 tools, tool sets, I guess, or more. So you will learn, uh, learn a lot of tool sets. And then another month, we call it active learning phase. Um, you learn the tools, about a little bit more than 30. You use them all, okay? We ask our students to use the, all the tools they learn, no matter if they understood or not. <laughs> you, need, you need this period of time uh, to actually understand what those tools mean, okay? And then here, you, you get to meet with these proposers. So these are actual, the real companies and organizations which will give us the proposals. So they give us the very real, very, um, um, very current um, issues or problem or, or um, their um, goals so that our students can tackle with them. So for example, NEC people gave us um, proposals proposal like this. Hey, we're really good at making sensors. We need to do something with it. What do we do? Very real, right? You're, you will never be given, we have this specific sensor and we have this much, um, this much capability and we, are we have a strength in this area and that and what to do. You will never be given such problem or such um, problem set if you work in a real company. You will never be given. All the problem you need to tackle is ill-defined. You need to define what to solve. You need to define where to go. So all the proposals was um, like that. And then so here you start working with proposals um, and but still you are still in the learning phase. So active learning phase you try to use all the tools you learn in, in the first phase. Now you're applying all the tools. And then after a month, now you're ready to go. We call it, now you're equipped. You're equipped with the right elements or right um, tools. Now you're ready to go. So we call it design phase. We, it, it, it's 
stands for four months, and it's a group of about four to six people, and then you tackle the problem. So this is how it's, how it's run. So this is what it looks like, okay? It, it was in this room. And these were the, our partners that we um, collaborated with. So um, we've been doing this to, since 2008, and then most of the instructors here in this room are related to um, this design project. And then actually, um, Kyoko-san and Tomita-san and myself are survivors. We survived in 2010. Focus on survived in 2011, so we know what it what it is like to um, to do to run the design project or design um, work. And KOSDM also has a very strong background in systems engineering masters uh, systems engineering, and we offer a master's degree and PhD of course here. And we are the nation's only university to provide degree program in systems engineering. Surprising, but it's true. And we need we. But this is a this is program line. We need to solve this issue. We need to expand um, our franchise. That we need to have more schools to be teaching this. Um, when we look at the, the worldwide um, dynamics, however, currently we're the only one. And then we offer um, professional trainings of um, system engineering for many companies. For example, JAXA, NEC, uh, Mitsubishi Electric, Honda, Nissan, and more. So we offer um, many professional trainings to um, these companies. And then uh, it, it's not uh, just one or two day course. It, it sometimes expands to um, half year or one year project. So there are so many things that we cannot talk about because of the NEA, but we can probably discuss uh, what we are doing in general. And then these are um, characteristic picture or photograph or drawing that I wanted to show you to to, to show you what the system engineer is. This is a um, very um, interesting project called F6, fractionated six, or F stands for different things. But this is a project um, proposed by uh, DARPA. DARPA is the US um, Defense uh, Research Institute who does crazy robotics. Do you know of Big Dog? Yeah, it's a type Type it in Google, you'll, you'll creep out probably, because it's just crazy robot that runs around just like a, a living animal, it's, it's crazy. So DARPA is a, a leading edge um, research institute that does crazy research like uh, space systems, robotics, autonomous control, and things like this. And this is one of their projects. So when you say satellite, satellite has different functionality um, built in one piece, right? That's a that's norm, that's a huge one. But they said, hey, why not we separate that functionality into smaller pieces? And they fly them together in a formation so that it will act as a large satellite, as a group. Who have read the story called Suimi when they were a little kid in school? Suimi. Suimi, you read it? So that's the, the best explanation I can think of. And <laughs> this is um, another slide from um, the conference that we always attend. It's called INCOSA International Council on Systems Engineering. Um, this is how you develop a large dynamic system. So this is a slide from Ford, how they uh, interact with their system of interest, which is a car. Now car has more ECU computers than ever. And surprisingly, if you count the number of computers on the car, on board, it counts. At, it adds up more than 100 now. It's 100. So the number of the ECU or computers on, the, on board on the car is almost equivalent to the rockets or the space shuttles. So now car has become so complicated and it's now even communicating outside. It's network centric. So we need new engineering to engage such complex system design. So. Now Ford and many other companies in Europe as well, they're engaging the system engineering. So it, it is about designing a complex system. It is about executing the development of this complex system. So this is the essence, essential of the system engineering. But don't, don't worry, you will not do systems engineering, but you will think like a systems engineer, okay? Which will, which will benefit you, which will benefit you when you're trying to come up with innovative solution and when you are trying to actually develop your innovative solution. So please look forward to that. And then we have a strong background also in entrepreneurship design. And then this is a class um, taught by Hashiguchi-san and Tomitan. 
um, entrepreneurship design theory class, and MBA type methods and tools are taught, so they are more useful in case for startup businesses. So that's what the course is designed for. And many faculty members and also students are startup founders and company CEOs. Okay, you'll you will surprise how many CEOs we have. Okay, let's see hands. Who are CEOs? Doi Kun, you are, are your CEOs, right? No, I'm co-founder. Okay, co-founder, raise your hand. <laughs> see, these are the co-founders and CEOs. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So, um, it's not a big deal. You only need ten thousand yen to become CEO, right? <laughs> yes, it's it's easy, but. But there, there, you need some strategy. So, we have been teaching this class since when? Since two years ago? It's a relatively new class, right? Yes. And then um, we will um, uh, convert this into a global entrepreneur or uh, entrepreneur in a, in a global context um, um, manner. And then we will teach some, some part of this um, class. Um, in the EDGE program. So those are three things that you will be doing for the um, K, uh, KO EDGE program. And, okay, here are some um, common approach that you need to keep in mind when you, whenever you do design thinking, system thinking, or business synthesis, or or any other thinkings or any other doings, okay? You need to think innovative and then you need to be thinking convergent or divergent thinking and then you want to focus on insight, okay? This is quite important. I will uh, repeat this throughout today, uh, but I will uh, go uh, one by one. So think innovative. I've been talk we've been talking about this all day um, since this morning, but out of the box, Okay, you need to go out of the box. But to go outside the box, you need to know where the box is. Yeah, it's, 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 it sounds like a riddle, but you need to know where the box is. Because otherwise, you're just saying crazy stuff. All right? And an expert can come up and say, hey, I know that already. You're not on the box. You're like way in the box. Right? So you need to understand where the box is. So where, where the people's bias is, where the people's normal ideas are, okay? And you want to find that first to get outside of the box. So this is more, uh, more of a, no offense to anybody, but if you're a genius, you don't have to think about this because you're already out of the box, right? And if you're a genius, you're probably not here because you know what to do, right? You're here because you're not quite genius. You want to learn some approach, right? So this, I think, I hope I can share that with you. I'm not genius, but I learned some techniques, I learned some mindset to compete with these crazy idea geniuses, okay? And then one thing that I learned personally myself is that, you need, okay, I'm good at finding box, I'm good. Because I've been in the box for almost like 20 whatever years. And I recently I learned how to find a box. Once I find a box, I know the way out. Okay? So that's the strategy. That's the strategy. So out of the box, you know, it's, it's often said, it's, it's been told so many times and you know this already. But it's rare to, to know that you need to know the box before you go out of the box. Okay? Maybe I should cover this in Japanese as well. But I know, you 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 know, so we're not when you think when you try to think innovative innovatively, you're not just looking for a crazy idea or eccentric idea, right? You want the idea, it may sound crazy, but also new and valuable. This is also important. Okay? You are not contemporary artist. 
okay? You're not Okamoto Taro, right? People may admire you as artists, but we're talking about creating a new thing and trying to spread, okay? Well, I'm not offending any artist, but we're talking about making someone's life better or someone's um, life easier. So, yes, crazy ideas are welcome, but it has to be new and valuable. So let's try to focus on that. Always, always. Like, it, it, whether you are in the design thinking mode, whether you're in the system thinking mode, whether, whether you are in the business synthesis mode, you always need to keep, on, keep um, thinking innovatively, okay? And then divergent, convergent thinking. We will talk about a little bit more about this in, uh, this afternoon, but when you're divergent thinking, diverge, or hassan, divergent thinking, you are exploring and expanding the solution space. Okay, so it's again like think about the box. Okay, that's your solution space, normal solution space. You want to expand from that. So that's a divergent thinking. You want to explore more options, more options. Okay, and then convergent thinking, choose convergent thinking is you organize or you focus to find the way out of the box. So once you expand or explore. You have so many things, you know, so many things, it's, it's chaotic, sometimes it's out of order. And you want to find the way to organize it or way to focus it so that you know the way out of the box, okay? So it's a combination of expanding or exploring and then organizing or structuralizing in focus, all right? So this is the, this two, two comes in pair sometimes. It, it's not necessarily sequential. It's not about divergent and conversion, conversion and diverge. It's not like that. You can go diverge, 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 and maybe like two days later you can converge. That's okay. But conceptually it comes in set, right? Because if you just diverge, then you're again Okamoto Taro, probably. I'm no fan, but it gets nowhere, probably. So it's, it comes in pairs. And then insight. Again, we will talk about this a lot this afternoon. So this is the one of the most difficult English term that hardly translated to any good Japanese. We ha we've been looking for good Japanese translation, the direct translation of insight, but we always fail. We looked into Buddhism. No, no luck. Yes, there are so many crazy words that may be suitable, but sounds crazy. So we didn't we didn't adopt that. But he here is my my explanation. So insight is in Japanese it could be translated as kizuki or dousatsu, right? But when you're in the design process and then when you are talking about insight within the design process, it's not just regular kizuki or regular um, dousatsu. It's a, it's a great kizuki that drives your solution, right? It drives your team or yourself towards the goal, all right? So yes, you will have a lot of kizuki here and there, but there, there are not so many insight that will actually drive you towards the goal, the final solution. So maybe if you read the, the book, Creative Confident, there, there, there are so many insight appears in different pages. So I think they use the insight a little bit differently. Like, like I explained, it is a very important kizuki or insight that will drive your um, design process or that, that will drive your team towards the goal, okay? And then here, this is just a proposal. This is not a final, but here I think this is a good way to find a good insight. Your good insight is usually unusual. It looks unusual at the first glance, but interesting, okay? You go, what? But when you take another moment, it, sound, it, it, it looks really interesting. So that, that's, I think that's a good insight or important insight. And another case is that your insight, good insight or different insight that may um, lead you to innovative option or innovative solution are unfamiliar at first glance. Okay? It doesn't look familiar at first, but when you take a second thought or you, know, you think a little bit deeper, but it's convincing, okay? I don't know how many people agree on this, but 
this is how I feel from my personal experience. And then it depends. Like, it, it, it really differs because I have certain knowledge, I have certain domain background, right? So something may be very unusual for me, but it may be very familiar or, un, or unusual for, for you. So it's all relative, it's all relative. But think about you're working in a diverse, diverse, um, diversity team. Your team want to find something unusual, but interesting, right? You want, you want to follow that hint, probably. And think about you're in the diver, uh, diversity team, you find something unfamiliar for all of you, but it's still convincing. It, 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 it's telling you some story, the convincing story. You want to follow the hints like these to tackle or to reach to the innovative solution. So follow the insight or look for the insight. Look for the insight and don't look for a great answer, okay? Brainstorming or whatsoever will never give you an answer, but it will give you insight, okay? The field work, prototyping, anything does not give you an answer, does not give you a solution, but it will give you different insight. And you pick up them, and then you need to design a solution. You need to get to the final goal, okay? So this is really, really important. So no matter what I'm talking, I, you always need to remind yourself, you need to think innovatively, you need to go outside the box. And to go outside the box, you need to know the box. So you sometimes, um, to, to be able to go outside the box, you need to do a lot of research, a lot of analysis to find where the box is. So this may sound contradictory, but that's how you strat strategically go out of the box, okay? Unless you're genius, unless you're genius. If you're genius, you're, you're, you're already a step away from the box, so you don't really have to worry about this. But if you think you're just a normal person, then you need to think about the box. And diversion and conversion thinking. When you say thinking, you usually think of conversion, okay? So when you hear a term thinking, you think you um, clarify, right? And you minimize, you structure, and then you organize, and you get less things at the end, right? You start thinking this many things, and you think, 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 and you get this. So this is how you perceive thinking until this moment. But there is a type of thinking called divergent thinking. This is not new. You can find this terminology from a book um, uh, published in 1960s. You can go to um, Pew, uh, Pew, Stuart Pew. Um, there's a total design. It's a great book uh, published in 1960s. There is a terminology, the divergent thinking and convergent thinking. So it's not a new concept. It's been there for, for years and years. But there is a type of thinking that called divergent. You want to explore and expand your solution space. That's really, really important when you want to think innovatively. Okay, so this is um, interrelated. This is not like completely depend uh, independent. This is inter interdependent, but this is another aspect that I really want you to be thinking. Maybe, so I want you to be able to say, hey, we need to diverge now. Or hey, now it's better we converge, okay? So with, once you get used to it, you don't have to say it out loud. You, you can just do it naturally, just like soccer, right? You don't, have to, you don't have to say, I am shooting, or I'm passing, right? But once you pick up playing soccer, you need to practice separately. So that's what you will be doing. Think innovative and divergent conversion. Once you get used to it, you can play um, flawlessly, or you can just pl play um, smooth, okay? And then, insight. You are not looking for a solution or idea. You are looking for insight, and good insight. And there's a very big difference between normal findings and insight. You will have a lot of findings, okay? Oh, I found that, I found this. But they're not insight, because insight will drive your solution, or drive your team, okay? So once you have a collection of findings, you need to be carefully examining which are your insights, okay? So these three concepts are very, very important when we continue our discussion um, later this afternoon, all right? So, 
Wow, I'm on time. Great. <laughs> so when we come back from the lunch, um, uh, we're going to have uh, an hour break to have lunch. Uh, we're going to talk about the today's portion, design thinking. So I'm going to talk about the mindset and some um, methodologies or tools, and you will, you will be doing more exercise. I'm, I'm sorry, this morning was a more of an introduction session that I've been doing a lot of talking, but you'll be doing a lot of exercises in the afternoon. Any question so far? Comments? Hungry? <laughs> Good. All right. So well, let's take a break for an hour. It's a lunch break. And then um, we have uh, the Hiyoshi lunch map. <laughs> right. So for those who are not familiar with um, this area, there's a Hiyoshi lunch map. But unfortunately, this is in Japanese. So find your Japanese friend who can read. And here, we have um, different books. Uh, different books uh, we recommend. So there, there is a Creative Confidence that I recommended you on the on, online, and some other random books that we like. And um, we can talk about the book if you want to. So uh, please find some members of SDM if you are interested in any of the book here. Okay. All right. Let's come back at um, five after one. Five after one in this room. Okay. All right. Have a good lunch.